Hi guys, back with another Junior Cycle 2023 exam question. Uh, we moved on now to question three. So question 3a is um, a simple division of a line question. Uh, so anyone who's doing Junior Cycle graphics should know how to do this at this stage. All you're doing is an acute angle from point A. So it's asking you to recreate the buttons basically for the coffee machine up above. So you have five of them as I just counted them out there. Uh, so all you're doing is you're setting your compass uh, to any length at all and then you're just stepping off five equal positions along that acute red line that I've just drawn in or the acute angle that I've just drawn in. So I've just got any length of my compass. I'm starting at A and going down five equal divisions. Okay, so there's five equal divisions. And then I'm just joining the last one to B and then going parallel from there. So join the last one here to B. And then I'm just going parallel there with my sliding set squares. So you can't see my other set squares in that in the picture. Um, but I'm going parallel from there. Just dividing up that line A, B into five equal parts. And then all I'm doing is just bringing it vertically straight up. So just checking that my um, my set squares, I'm going to do this with my sliding set squares, but I'm just going to bring it vertically straight up from each one of those divisions and that will divide it into equal parts. So I'm going to go color and shading each one of these buttons. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got the uh, colors or a match to the colors that are in the um, in the image above, but I'm just going to go ahead and color all these fellas in. Uh, so I'll speed this part up anyway. Um, and again, just I say this to my students all the time: if it says color and shade it in the question, there's going to be marks going to it. So make sure that you're coloring and shading that in as well. So you might notice there I'm using a combination of pen and pencil just to um, to kind of highlight each one of the buttons. Um, and I'm just going to write in all the indicators. It doesn't ask you to do it at all, but I just figured it'd be a nice thing to do. That's that question finish off now. So we'll move on to question 3B. Okay, so question 3B is a parabola question. So basically we have to draw a parabola between A, O and B as shown here in your uh, question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide up uh, the line AD using our division of a line technique, the one that we just did in the question above. And I'm gonna divide the length of line OD as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw in any old acute angle from both of those points. That's O and A. And I always find it easiest to do four points for this kind of rectangular method of drawing a parabola. So I'm gonna divide each length, that's AD and OD, into four equal lengths. So I'll take my compass, again, keeping that same length on your compass, step it off four equal times, join the last one back to the point that you haven't gone from. So you've gone from one point to that line, you haven't gone from the other point to the end of the line, so you're gonna join the last point on your division, or the last point of your division, let's say, to the end point of the line. So I'm gonna start off with the vertical line, that's AD, and I'm gonna join the last point on that division, like I was saying, to the point A, because we've gone with our acute angle from D, put in those divisions, now we're gonna join it back to A, and we're gonna use our sliding set squares then to go parallel from each point. Okay, so back to A, and then I'm gonna go straight from there through that vertical line to give us each one of our divisions. It's fairly self-explanatory, we've just done it above with our, um, with our other question, however, we just need to repeat this again a second time to divide up O, D. Okay, so I'm just gonna label all of these. These will come in later for our parabola. I'm starting off with zero, so that's D is basically replaced with zero, and then I have one, two, three, and A has been replaced with four. I'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna go from O to D now, so I'm gonna divide this up. This is our horizontal line. So back to D, and then straight through our horizontal line for each division. And again, I'll label these up. 
are always gonna stay the same, or are always gonna change to a zero essentially, and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then D will be replaced with four. So D is zero and it's four, it's a bit confusing, but we'll talk to you about that in a second. So that's still zero, so you're gonna have one, I have two, I have three, and then four. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put in uh, vertical lines from each one of these divisions that we've just created. So there's a vertical line going in from one, a vertical line going in from two, and a vertical line going in from three. Um, so that's all I'm doing there now. I'm just using my sliding set squares because I don't think the sheet was on perfectly uh, horizontally. I don't think it printed very well. So that's three of my uh, division lines going in. And then all I'm doing is I'm just joining three back to zero. And where that crosses the third vertical line, that's gonna give us our point in our problem. Then two, where that crosses the second vertical line, that's gonna give us a point in the problem. And then one, and where that crosses the uh, first vertical line, that's gonna give us our last point, our second last point, sorry, on our problem. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do my division of a line again. Split up the line OC, virtually exactly the same thing we did already. Um, you could just swing all of these points, the one, two, three, four, uh, around zero, which are compass, but just for uh, argument's sake, I just repeated this step again. Uh, so again, division of a line, I'll speed this all up, um, and we're gonna draw in vertical lines at each one of those points. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do, uh, you could just join, you could do the same thing again, divide it up, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring horizontally each one of the points on the parabola that I found on the left-hand side across to the right-hand side. Our parabola is basically gonna be a mirror image um, through that center line that we have printed on our sheet. So I'm just gonna bring all of those through, mark them up there with my uh, black pen, and then we can start freehanding in our parabola. Okay, so freehand it in, I just start at zero, it doesn't really matter where you do. And then just freehand in that conic or that curve. And that's gonna complete the parabola portion of this question. So just take your time with it, kind of go back and forth. I'm only just ever looking at joining with my freehand. I'm only ever looking between two points. So just joining that point A there that's printed on our sheet to the next point up, that's the third point on the parabola. Um, and feel free, uh, I always kind of tell my students to feel free to either move your board around, even take the sheet off, um, or like, you know, complete all the rest of your questions, come back to your freehand curves later on, you know, that might stick you with time. Um, but I actually find it's much, much easier to do these conics uh, when they're not attached to your board. So if they're, if they're kind of free floating around the page, you can then just, you know, take them off and kind of manipulate them to whatever suits yourself. I will add, I probably lost a mark or two now for not joining A and B to that semicircle, but that's that question complete. Okay, so we're on to uh, the last question on this sheet, not the last question of uh, question three, or the last part of question three. Um, this is a fairly soft um, development question, as development questions go. Um, especially in comparison to the mocks um, and the other questions that we've seen previously. So they're asking you to complete a development of the given uh, packaging box. This is kind of linked to that junior cert um, project uh, that these um, junior certs would have sat that year. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm just gonna extend my lines. Um, this is when I realized that the sheet is not on uh, correctly so I'm using my sliding set squares um, but I'm just going to extend my lines down as if um, as if I'm kind of completing a plan or an elevation or whatever um, so I'm just extending all of my relevant points down and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to label up each one of the surfaces so surface number one with the, the circle in it I have surface number uh, four actually sorry service number four service number two and service number three so this is service number one 
uh, this is surface number two, surface number three will be here, and then surface number four will be somewhere off to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the width of surface number one, because we know from our elevation above the surface number one, the width of surface number one and the width of surface number three are the same. And I'm just gonna step off that distance to create surface number three in my development. Um, and then I'm just gonna put in a little construction line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my compass, I'm gonna get the uh, the width of surface number two and four. So two and four, obviously back to back to one another. I'm gonna drop that guy in um, after surface number three. So from that construction line that it is found, I'm gonna go ahead and step off the width of surface number four. Surface number four and two kind of slant down. So I'm just gonna, that horizontal uh, distance that I have there, I'm gonna just step it off onto that. And then it's just a matter of finishing out your question. So I'm just gonna go around heavy um, around the outside of each of these um, shapes, these, each of these polygons to create my development. Uh, so at the top of surface three, the slant inside of surface four, the horizontal are the vertical line of surface four, and then the whole base of your item. The last thing you need to do is make sure that you have your fold lines put in. So your fold lines always look like your hidden detail lines, those dashed lines. So make sure you have your fold lines indicated. Make sure you don't go over heavy um, with them because you will possibly lose marks there. But also you're not illustrating to the viewer that these are actually fold lines, okay? The fold line don't be on the sheet, so you're kind of being reminded about that anyway. But it's kind of a key point of any of these development questions that you need to include. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do this circle because it's shown for us in this 3D view like it's a hole. So they have a construction line on our elevation where it's just this X kind of drawn from corner to corner of your rectangular surface there. So all I'm doing is I'm just mimicking that X and then I'm going to take the radius of this circle in elevation and I'm going to go ahead and draw in that circle. Okay, so. Um, just take the radius there given to you in your question. You've already found the center because we've already just drawn in that X. So just remember to take your time in constructing your circle because as you can see mine is about to slip and destroy my question. Um, and then once you have that done, that's that question complete. Um, I'm gonna do question three uh, D on its own because it's a longer question. So this is this video finished, um, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, it'll be hitting YouTube down a little while. All right, thanks very much. Cheers.